Okay, in this video, the point really is to give you a parallel between matrix operations and regular real number operations. I don't want you overthinking these columns here with subtraction of real numbers or division of real numbers. I just wanted to really get the point that there, not everything that you know about at this point is commutative, okay? Because matrix multiplication in particular is not commutative. So commutative means the order, um, if, if it, something is commutative, the order in which you do that operation doesn't matter. So adding and multiplying, these are commutative. But um, subtraction, for example, is not because certainly a minus b is not the same thing as b minus a. And, and likewise with division, a divided by b is not the same thing as b divided by a. So having commutativity is not a property that everything we know about already has, right? So, um, but how about for matrices? Um, matrix addition is commutative because, of course, the way that matrix addition is defined is really just term by term real number addition. Um, but matrix multiplication, so this one's a yes, but matrix multiplication is not commutative, and this is something that we still have to learn more about, but A times B in general will not be equal to B times A. There will be occasional times where it's, it, they will be equal, but in general, it's not commutative. Okay, so associativity is talking about whether um, the way we parenthesize and, and um, the terms, does it matter, right? So for addition and multiplication, the way that we um, parenthesize doesn't matter, so it is associative. Um, but for subtraction, it's not. Um, for example, if you think about taking something a minus b and then subtracting off c, that's not going to be the same thing as taking a and then subtracting off b minus c, because here I'd have to distribute that negative. So this one again, no. Um, and division, you should be able to convince yourself, is also not associative. Um, Matrix addition, again, because of the way matrix addition is defined in terms of just real number addition, term by term, this will be true. Matrix addition, yes, will be associative. Um, and in fact, matrix multiplication is also associative. So A times B times C will be the same thing as A times B times C. Okay, so this one's also yes. Okay, so now um, the distributive property, um, so this is a little bit different. So the, the point is distributive property is really talking about how multiplication carries across these other operators. So just uh, multiplication will distribute across addition, right? This is the property we know about for real numbers. It also will carry over for um, across subtraction because A times B will be equal to A times C. Um, will it carry across division? No, um, because if you think about A um, divided by, um, I'm sorry, um, one second. Okay, so A divided by B divided by C, right? So I'm trying to think about how we're like doing it instead of A times B plus C, we're thinking about, um, oh, I'm sorry, this should be multiplication. So see, this is why I was pausing a minute ago. Okay, so we're thinking about how does multiplication carry across um, division. So is it true that A times B over C, is that equal to A times B and over a times c, and of course not, that's not how we multiply, right? We think of this as a over um, one, right, o a over one, so it would be a b over c, so it's not, it's not distributive over across, across division. Again, the point of these two columns is not meant to confuse you, and I think in this one I may have, <laughs> but the point is really just to compare it to what are the sorts of properties we know about um, real numbers and how does that translate to matrices? Um, so the point is that for matrix multiplication, that will carry the distributive property. So this will be true. So this is a yes. Okay, the identity. So uh, we have to be careful about the identity. Identity is um, whatever we do for, so the identity is unique to the operation. In this case, if we're talking about addition, the identity is zero because zero is the number that if I add it to any number A on either side of A, I'm, I, it's unchanged, right? It's left the same. So A plus zero is A, but zero plus A is also A. So the additive identity is zero, but when we're talking about multiplication, the number that you do to A to not change it is multiplied by one. So one being multiplied on either side of A would, would keep, sticks to A. So the question here is for subtraction, is there something that if I take A minus that something, I get A? And you might already be saying, oh yeah, zero. But it has to also be true that if I take that thing and subtract off A, I still get A. So if I did zero here, that wouldn't work here because I'd get negative A. So in fact, there is no identity for subtraction. Um, and likewise, if I think about 
What about a divided by something so that I get a, but also that same thing when I divide it by a, I have to get a. And so there's, there's no div, um, division identity either. What about for matrix addition? So um, is there some matrix that I can add to a so that it doesn't change the value of a, and it has to be the same matrix that when I add it on the other side, I still get a. Um, and answer, the answer is yes, actually we have this. Um, this is the, the identity is the zero matrix. So I'm gonna make it the bold. So that's just the matrix that has all entries being zero, right? Because certainly matrix addition is just defined as real number addition term by term. So if we're just always adding zero, a matrix full of zeros, that's gonna be our additive identity for matrix addition. And what about multiplicative identity? So is there something I can multiply A by as a matrix that still stays A, and I have to multiply by that same thing on the other side and still get A. Um, and the answer is yes, there is something, and the, the book is, most people will call this I. Um, I is the identity matrix, and um, we'll see in a little bit, um, let's see if, can I scroll this over a little bit? There we go. Um, so we're gonna learn a little bit later that the identity matrix has ones along the diagonal, however big it is. It has to be a square matrix, and then it has zeros everywhere else. So we'll come back to that, but for the purpose of this video, there is an identity. There's a multiplicative identity, and it's um, the matrix I, square matrix I. All right, how about the last one for inverses? So what is an inverse? An inverse is what you have to add, or I'm sorry, what you have to do, depending on the operation, what you have to do to A to get back to the um, identity. So we're trying to get back to zero here or trying to get back to one here. So A plus its opposite, so the opposite of A is the inverse of A since that's what gets you back to zero. Likewise, how do I, what do I multiply by A to get to the multiplicative identity? Well, you have to multiply by the reciprocal of A. So the multiplicative inverse of any A is the reciprocal, one over A. Since there's no identity, there's nothing you can do to get back to the identity, so there's no inverse. But what about for matrices? So um, what could I add to get back to that zero uh, matrix? And I have to be able to add it on both sides. So we've already talked about this already above. Um, this is called the um, additive inverse of A, and it's gonna be denoted by negative A. So yes, there's an additive, the additive inverse is just a scalar multiple of A, negative one times that matrix A, right? So that's the same thing that's gonna get you back to that zero matrix. So yes, there is an inverse. And what about a multiplicative inverse? So is there something we can multiply by A to get back to the identity, and it, it has to be that same thing to get back to the identity on both sides. Um, and the answer is yes, there is, and we haven't really talked about this yet, but there's um, what's called um, the multiplicative inverse. We'll usually denote it A with a superscript to the negative one. Um, if we multiply A by its inverse, when it exists, we get back to the identity. So this is both of these two things right here, these two boxes, we'll have more to talk about in future videos, but this at least gives us a comparison of how do the properties of matrices compare to the properties of real numbers.